So I think the way we were going, Julia and I were um, going to divide this up is actually I was going to take the very, very early stages of when someone joins. So literally uh, after you give them the offer letter, uh, up until uh, at Wildfire we do a, a two-week training program when people first join. We, we try to have people join in clusters. So we have a, a class of people joining every month. We do a two-week training program. So I was going to be very tactical, uh, just tell you about some of the things that we do during that period of time. Uh, and then Julia was going to take it, which I've um, asked her to interject along the way if, she, if they do things differently. She has other ideas, but she was going to then take it from that point onwards, uh, how do you retain people um, sort of for the longer term around things like uh, performance evaluation, culture, uh, all those kinds of things. Um, and so one thing I wanted to caveat is Wildfire, uh, we started the company, or founded the company summer of 2008. Um, I guess beginning of last year, we had 10 people. In fact, we had about Four people started in January of 2010, which felt like an enormous number of people joining the company. And then by the end of, of last year, I think we're up to um, almost 80 now. We're, we're um, well over that. So uh, a lot of the things that I'm going to mention are actually things we've put in place within the last month or the last two months or the last three months. So it's not like we've, you know, the first person that we hired, there was no training program. There was no onboarding process. They just showed up and we're like, oh, we better create an email account for you. So I guess point being that a lot of these things evolve as your company grows as you need to evolve them and uh, this is a work in progress for us so as we continue to grow we'll continue to change what we do um, but I guess the goals for us uh, in terms of this this process between when we give out an offer letter and when someone joins us for the first couple of weeks uh, first of all the goal frankly is just to really make someone feel incredibly welcome and really um, impressed with our company the the speakers earlier uh, made the good point, which is just because you get someone to sign an offer letter doesn't mean that they're actually going to join and stay at your company. So I think it's incredibly important through the interview process, uh, through the offer process, before they come and after they come to make someone just feel really, really excited about the company that they're joining so that uh, you s get on the right foot from the start and they stick around. Um, the other goal, frankly, is that we're that we're really working through now is just to make a scalable process. So to try to uh, get things in place so that it's as efficient as it possibly can be. And that's things like having people all start at the same time just makes it more efficient from training, from onboarding, all of that. And, and uh, a third goal is, um, uh, you know, we just want to have people up to speed as quickly as possible. So that's where training comes in. That's where some of the materials that we send people even before they join, just trying to get them as knowledgeable as we possibly can, as soon as we possibly can, because in a startup, as you all know, you need someone to be valuable as quickly as possible. You can't afford to have them to take three months to ramp up. And then the final thing, frankly, is uh, referrals are incredibly important to us for our hiring. It is our most important source of hiring. We've had uh, many of our very, very best candidates have come through referrals, so we really, and, and naturally the new people that join your company are the people that, are, that know the broadest network, they haven't mined their network yet for referrals, so those are the people that we really want to impress and get them excited enough so they're out there talking with their friends and helping us recruit new people. Uh, so those are some of the goals. Um, and yeah, I was just going to step through a few of the things that we actually do um, in terms of when we give out an offer letter, uh, certainly one, one thing that you mentioned was give a really short timeline. So we've certainly learned that along the way that if you let someone linger for too long over an offer, it's, 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 you know, doesn't, it doesn't always work out well. Um, but the other thing that we'll do, just little things, uh, things that don't cost much, don't take much time, but they make an impression. Like uh, when we send out an offer letter to someone, we will always um, copy on that email uh, myself and uh, the direct boss of that person and uh, all of the recruiting team that they've met along the way. And we will always follow up and say, congrats, and we're so excited for you to come. Just little touches like that. The other thing we'll do is get a couple of people that um, that, that person is going to work with. So colleagues that are on the same level as that person to actually reach out, give them a phone call, say, hey, we're so excited uh, that you're joining and do you have any questions? And we've found that that's uh, for anyone that sort of has any lingering questions that maybe they weren't comfortable to ask to uh, their direct boss, they're able to get that out and, and talk to their colleagues. So we've found something we just started doing recently, we found that it's really effective. Um, once we get someone to accept um, we actually have now started sending out um, 
uh, wildfire branded cookies. Uh, we, have, we have this great client called Chocolate Bakery that's been one of our best clients right from the beginning. And he creates these little, uh, they're not little actually, it's like a huge cookie with a big wildfire logo on it that he custom creates for us. And we send that out to the candidate along with a card uh, that I've signed and that uh, everybody that that person's going to work with and the recruiting team has signed just saying, hey, welcome, we're really excited that you're coming. Um, and then what we'll also do, particularly for someone that's not going to start for a while, so we're finding this now, and again, it's all new experiences, but with some of our um, hires that are still in college, so we're hiring them now, but they're not going to start until the summer, we're really trying to reach out to them and have them join us early for team events. So we have at least one team event a month, usually several, um, having those new hires before they've even started come and join us on that, just to get them really excited about the company so that they don't lose interest before they join us. Um, I'll kind and, of jump sorry, in if please, you don't mind. Please, I think yeah. that um, we, we, we heard Ethan and Prague talk about this as well, but um, one of the biggest lessons we learned was that when the offer letter is signed, that doesn't actually mean that their butt is going to end up in the seat. And um, it was a hard lesson to learn. I think the first time it happened to us early on and now I think of it as like these friendly hooks that you put into them after you, you know, get them to sign the offer letter. It's all sort of these touch points and you almost can map out who, who will be making those touch points. You want them to feel organic, but team events, having the founders reach out, hiring managers, um, it really arms them with the confidence of making the decision that they're making because oftentimes they'll sign the offer letter and then you know that within the next 24 hours they're going to talk to their boss and they're going to be trying to leave their current gig and oftentimes that's the most precarious time uh, of all you know of this offer uh, process and so we are very aware of that sort of have these heightened levels of you know awareness based on um, what situation each candidate is in and knowing exactly when they're having that conversation and actually helping coach them through what they will say as they leave their their current job and then as that's sort of transformed we then you know we then engage with them on on all sorts of different levels to get them, you know, engaged with the team prior to the first day. Yeah. Yeah. And so on the performance side, you know, I just recently, as of like six weeks ago, hired our first director of HR. We, we hadn't, we didn't have an HR department. We outsourced everything um, to a company called Algentis. Um, but we, uh, she came in, um, she, she's from Ironport, and so she has a uh, very strong experience in growing uh, a team quite rapidly. And she is really focused on performance management. So she's not the HR compliant, you know, paper pushing, do this, don't do this. She's really coming in to help us understand as we are a group of 120 growing to possibly 200 this year, how do we now take this really strong, excited team and really drive performance and be very results driven? And so that's been an organic part of our culture to date. But I think as you grow your team, these are kind of the things you need to start thinking about. And so what we're formulating is sort of our our vision around performance management, which starts with, you know, obtaining, you know, setting objectives and really understanding what, where your goals are. We have grown so quickly that it took us a while to understand that we had to distill what we wanted to get done in 2011 into three goals. It sounds really simple, but we hadn't done it. Um, and so when we actually did take the time to take our very detailed 2011 plan and distill it into three goals, it was this major shift in the company. I could feel like everybody felt really crystal clear about what our priorities were. Um, you know, the other day, we have a lot of whiteboard space in our new office. We just moved into this like 27,000 square foot square. Um, we have very, very low desks and no offices and no cubes and everything's really open. Uh, one of the parts about our culture is that we love to be like in this room. You can stand up and see each other. But there are these whiteboards everywhere. And so I went around and just, they're all blank because we just moved in. I tagged like almost every whiteboard space I could find with our March goals. So our, our two top metrics, which is gross ticket sales and new active paid event organizers. And uh, and now when you look in the office, you can't look, I mean, your eye catches that every single time you look somewhere. And it's actually been so incredibly effective for people to understand what are we driving towards in March? And then, you know, time 
tying those up to our bigger goals. So again, it's a lot about objectives. And then now what we're working on is giving appraisals. And so that's you know continual and empowering feedback. And so what we expect from Brightlings is that they'll speak up, that they'll collaborate, and that they'll they'll be willing to work on their development. And for us as managers, you know, it's important for us to always be willing to give that continual feedback. So always ha be having you know constant one-on-ones. Set a 90-day plan for new hires, and also we are moving towards the dreaded term of performance evaluations. But we're kind of creating a system that is more organic to who we are, instead of just trying to fit ourselves into a box. Um, and and that's in development. But we're looking at you know how can we create this idea of an oar, like getting in a boat. You know you need that oar. So setting objectives, uh, giving appraisals, and then achieving results. And that's that's what we're working towards as far as performance management.